<laughs> Yo! Hi, my name is Trevi. And I'm Kate. And welcome back to our podcast called Six, Six Feet Above. I got it. Um. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it! Okay. There's an elephant in the room and we have to address it <laughs> because I'm already laughing too much. Oh, man. Okay. So. Hmm. How do we? Okay. I'm like, okay, fine, I'll talk. Yeah. No. <laughs> God. I'm like, let me take okay. this away. So I fear I I got warped up in our little scandal um, of Reddit, and then I kind of like became aware that it's like a whole other. It's a whole other landscape mm-hmm. of like people that watch podcasts because like, it's really interesting to read even other people's podcast Reddit threads. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone on there is very intense. And very, not, I wouldn't mm-hmm. say insightful. I would say very just like thoughts, right? Unfiltered, right? Yeah. Um, and that that and that if that if Reddit is a safe space for people to do that, then so be it. But, yeah. Um, six feet above has a sub uh, subreddit, right? That has been growing. Which we appreciate, which we appreciate. It's crazy. I can't um, believe it's insane. I mean, that yeah. I mean, I love it. People until, know us. No, no, oh, yeah, no. Yeah. We love people. Do people do gig and gag? Um, but I started checking it a little bit more <laughs> obsessively, uh, obsessively, <laughs> and I have friends and people in my life that. You know, have to like delete Reddit from their phone, and I fear I'm gonna be one of them soon. I need to go to like Reddit detox because right. I can't, I can't stand seeing my name like talked about in such an intense way. Yeah, uh, there was a thread, <laughs> and it wasn't even like a popular thread, but yeah. it bothered me so much. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I texted Kate immediately, and I'm like, "Do you hate me?" Because the thread was. Yeah. Why do I feel like Trevi is putting Kate down in every episode? Yeah. And that kind of, that is like confused me greatly because I've only felt like you've lifted me up in like every way possible. And like, you are such a loyal friend. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, guys, she's like, um, and no, you, you are quite literally the realist. And. That, like, did upset me because I know you've, like, mentioned it before. You were, like, in one episode, you were, like, you know I'd do anything for you. Like, I know that, you know, I'm a little bit of a diva, but I'd do anything for you. And I got, like, sad that you even had to say that because, like, I know I trust you with my life at the end of the day. Yeah, I do. I trust you with mine as well. Thank you. Yeah, and then they said, do you want to talk about the other thing they said or no? (laughs) No, you go. Um, Well, they... They were, like, talking about you cutting me off and, like, I have, like, noticed it sometimes that you do that. And it's, like, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, last episode, like, I would have, like, absolutely been spiraling if, like, someone made a Reddit thread about me and it was just, like, rampant, like, body shaming. And, like, it's something that if you, if I felt that you were putting me down in episodes, I absolutely would have brought that up with you. Like, not Reddit literally being couples therapy, like, our couples therapist. Because, like, it... It's something sometimes I notice, like, very rarely. It's not like I was ever, like, resentful about it. It's just, like, something I moderately peeped. But, again, it's, like, again, I'm, like, I don't even think I should bring it up because it's not even a big deal. And also, like, most people are tuning in for yoi. Uh, I call f***ing bullshit because we've built this channel from the ground up. And, yes, maybe people who have seen me have come to this channel, but they have now grown to love you for you and like when we upload Mm -hmm. people come to see us but this is our channel and this is our podcast obviously i never do it intentionally but you cut me off with good stories no and i you know what (laughs) i do kind of eat sometimes you eat but look 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 look. i never meant to do it intentionally also the last two episodes we know i was kind of mentally like not anyway uh, i'm just gonna be more mindful no you're literally perfect but you're literally perfect and thank you because like also i had like, I've talked about this before, but I had a lot of imposter syndrome starting this podcast with you because, like, you have a lot of people with a, like, in your life with a massive following you could have done this podcast with. So I was, like, They're grappling boring. with that in the beginning. And I was like, oh, my God, like, why'd she even pick me? And now it's like, you know what? We're you're, a great team. You're, you're like, I get it. <laughs> no. And I no, get why you picked us. No. The fame, the fame. <laughs> no, not at all. But I just fully am obsessed with you. I'm and I never want to stop doing this with you. So. 
That was. I forgot the... to tell you. <laughs> I have to put my two weeks in. I do. So I need so a new person to do yeah, a podcast. So I with. actually will never interrupt again because I'm resigning. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm not. Literally, I'm just gonna be you. more. Gonna be more mindful. Also, just mentally getting back into into shape. I feel like the last two weeks was just like yeah. really weird. With like you know my first like ever scandal ever. I was just like yeah, shook up and I was like very in my head in the last episode and then what happened the one before I was just like sobbing like on the way here yeah I, I, no, you've I been going through you've been thawing out this is like your thawing out moment right now mm-hmm. when was when would you say that was for you around this time of yeah. sobriety yeah I was like wait what is my life and why am I always crying it was kind of cool yeah. it, it actually was yeah. I actually loved to feel mm-hmm. it's cool it's coming it's, it's coming and going but yeah Guys, if you're driving or falling asleep and you want to listen to the audio version, go ahead and look in the description and it'll be right there. Before we continue this episode, we just wanted to remind you guys to subscribe to our channel. And we know that you've been listening, so thank you uh, for subscribing to us because we see that number jumping. And click the notification bell right next to it so you get notified every single time that we upload. Anyway, hey, what's up? I haven't seen you in... (laughs) Oh, I was in San Diego, so I haven't seen you since last time we filmed. Right. Did we go out last weekend together? Oh, no. We didn't. No. Yeah. No, we did not. Wow, it's been a millennium. I don't think we're going out tonight either, are we? It's like kind of late. It's late. I'm in this like full lace outfit. Well, my that would eat at tenants. It would. It would. But I'm like, you can fully see my ass, so I don't know about isn't all that. Isn't that the point? <sighs> it is, isn't it? Um, No, I just... It's 9 p.m. right now. We normally film at like 7.30, so it is... A, quite late but i don't know maybe i'll get a second wind you do be doing that so right yeah how's your week good no i just i went to san diego and i i gigged and gagged i ate so much and played with my dogs and went to the beach and hung out with my mom i got a facial we'll get into that later and and it's like not the facial i'm normally used to (laughs) no literally Uh So <laughs> it was nice. Uh, I got back last night at one in the morning. You had a very busy day today. I had a very yeah. busy day today. We've been grinding. We have been grinding. And it's been good. It's just like when I got home from the my studio session today, I literally was like so ready to take a nap. And then I like my girl who does my hair was like waiting at my house, like inside oh, my good. house. And I was just like. <sighs> and I like sat in the glam chair yeah. and I'm like, I'm about to do Heavy a full face of makeup. Yeah. For this podcast. And that's how much we love you guys. Uh, literally. I mean, I'm obsessed with doing this podcast and it's all part of the grind. I bet you love editing out those cuss words. I know. It's the best. It's actually the legit best. Legit. But I'm loving the two times speed. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We knew, we learned some new edit hacks. And by we, I mean, Trevi taught me. And it's been really good. But it's Last easy. episode, I edited it and then I deleted the whole thing. So I had to re-edit it. But you know what? I'll do anything for you guys. And yeah. uh, Trevi watched me hook up with someone. That was crazy. <laughs> I was literally FaceTiming you and you were in, you were in one of those moods where it's like past 10 p.m. So like, I don't know. Right. So you're like, what are you doing? No, up? what are you? First of all, why are you doing cocaine? <laughs> Second of all. Dude, if I do it before I hook up, it doesn't count. Well, she answers. She's in like, I don't know. What were you wearing? I was in like a literal cloak. No, I was no, in like were, a robe. You, I was wearing the fake glasses I wear were, on here, here. And there was a candle in the there background. There was a candle <laughs> flickering. I was like, are you getting fucked right now? And then you go, I'm about to. And I like think that she's lying. She goes, hold up. She puts the phone down. She walks outside. I'm like, why is she going outside at 10 at night right now? On the FaceTime. And she goes... Hey, the gate's over here. And then I go, who is that? You go, I'm getting oh And I go, oh, what? I, I didn't know. know you were actually going to like. Fuck. I wanted you to bring this on my, bring you on this journey. Because you know, like the viewers, I have yeah. SEX like once a year. So when I do it, I want to bring my friends along yeah. for the ride. And by your friends, you mean NBC. Yeah. <laughs> 1000%. But I just wanted you to like, you know experience like meeting up because it gets i get kind of nervous meeting up with a guy i just wanted to like take you with me have i ever like facetimed you or like uh like no you're so private i like wish you would i mean i don't really i, I tell you everything but I, I don't i don't ever like but i would like a live performance okay well i might <laughs> i would love to give you one but i feel like if i don't know oh maybe i'll turn oh mm, that's illegal what? Oh, keep, to record it and keep not my ring camera yeah, on. No. <laughs> this video Perhaps is sponsored not. by yeah. Ring. No, I'm kidding. No, I won't do that. It was 
it was so cool because as you know, I've talked about before how I always cry the next day after I have intercourse because I'm so emotional. I get attached. Mm -hmm. Maybe I haven't said that. And if I didn't, don't tell anyone because that's embarrassing. It's but crazy. <laughs> I'm like, I cry before and after. During. But yeah, during. But this guy, I hooked up with him two years ago. He's been hitting my line like crazy. Mm. I've been dodging because he wasn't generous in the bedroom. Generous. Like, like returning he wasn't favor. like munching the yussi yeah and <laughs> i was like no we can't but then we kind of like facetimed i was like wait you're really hot and i was like why did i yeah he i was like you're hot and like you know what i'll give you another chance i saw your close friends <laughs> yeah but the next day i felt so good okay because what is that i it's weird because i don't like him like i don't have a like crush on him i don't know because Maybe it means that you found... Did he return the favor? Yeah. I think, like, I more so cry when I feel like I wasn't... Like, I just know that, like, I was just an... Ex like, I don't know. With some people, you can just tell yeah. that they, like, just didn't give a fuck about you. Right. And it's not even, like, even if it's casual and even if it was a hookup... Yeah. I feel like you can tell when, like, someone has, like, a little, like, it can at least just, like, talk to you. And, yeah. Like, and, like, a like, little crush. Sees you as a human. Like, was he, like. D <laughs> the bar is so I low. mean. No, we were, like, talking before exactly. and after. I felt, like, very comfortable around him. And what's crazy is the next day I was, like, listen, because he works in finance. Hey. Mark. I was, like, I hate to do this, but I have a friend you'd be perfect for. And I'm, like, trying to set him up with my friend. Me? No. Like, oh. I mean, no, because he lives in New York. And I was like, my friend that lives in New Who? York is also in finance. You don't know her. Oh. But I was like, what if I set you up? And he was like, we hooked up last night. And I okay, was like, Trevi putting, or <laughs> Kate putting Trevi down. Okay. You what? don't know her. He lives in New York. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> the Reddit thread's going to be like, I'm like, can you guys start a compilation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can take that. No. Um, but anyways. Wait, but so you, did he like her or no? Yeah, he was like, she's cute. Damn. Um, okay, million dollar matchmaker. So, but I was like, who am I to deny this man of love? Right. Because it's not going to come from me. And you know who you should never date? Anyone coming from New York. Literally. If I've learned my damn lesson. Or LA. Have you learned your lesson? No, not at all. <laughs> Catherine La Vrintios. I love a man in New York. Yeah, you do. Maybe, yeah. So that was my once a year intercourse. And no, I don't think it's going to be one a year. once a year. I think yeah. you're in an era where you feel comfortable with sexually exploring again. You're so right. And I don't think, I think if you limit yourself like that, you're not going to, because sometimes people fall in love or like, find out that they really like each other after they find out that they're actually compatible some mm. people go reverse so true i know so many people that on the first date and they like yeah and they're in, in and they're married. like married you know i'm just not even gonna say who it is but like someone very very close in my life had sex with their significant other on the first date and they're getting married wow yeah yeah you know what guys get out there so, get laid well do it safely yeah yeah, yeah. wear protection yeah. Oh wear my protection God. wear pro Protection. Yeah. I think, it, yeah, it just felt really, really powerful. I had one of, and you know what? Did he make you feel sexy? Yes. And I think that's also yes. what it is because some. I hate when they're silent. Wh when they're looking at you the entire time, you're so sexy. right, or you're so beautiful, or right. God, you look so hot. You look so good. Yeah. I'm just like, I the other right. day because this happened to me. I would say a few days before your moment happened, I got home from this hookup situation and oh. I, I i stepped outside I, I got back in the game a little bit period i had a fresh spray tan and mm. a fresh blowout wow. and this man looks at me but he's like you wanna it was like this big ass house too he's like do you wanna just get in the hot tub naked and make out hi and normally i would be like oh well like in my head i'm like oh i have a fresh spray tan like i right. just paid for a blowout and i'm like trevi you need yeah. to get out there and yeah live yeah when a guy asks you to be in a hot tub you do it but also well, just like when you always. well that's crazy yeah, yeah like, wait i take that back <laughs> i think that like there's moments where it's appropriate and when, yeah. when it's like okay you need to like you can't yeah. give a shit about your spray tan and your blood like right. you're denying yourself a beautiful experience yeah. of connecting with another human being in a body of warm water come on that's I so mean, rare these days it is <laughs> good god wait so how was like the hookup 
it was probably one of the best I've had in a very, very, very long time. And I felt so beautiful after. Yes. I went skinny dipping the whole night, got the hair wet. Yeah. And wow. I just got home. I was so giddy. I was like, I felt so beautiful after that. That's so good. And the next day, Mirlin came over, fixed my hair. Yeah. I buffed out my spray tan, went to Charlie XX's party. Come on. And is that. Is that a crime? Is that a crime? No, that's beautiful. I love, listen, I don't get why they, why men are silent in bed. Like I, most women I know want to hear compliments in the bedroom. And it's like, are you trying to humble us? Like we're already in bed together. Well, I think that's the only time they should talk. (laughs) And that, and I literally agree. Yeah. (laughs) I got too excited. I like didn't know what to say. (laughs) I was like, I agree. You just start making animal noises. Yeah. <laughs> so we're we're back out there. Okay, so you, you wouldn't say you regretted it. No. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, I can't stop not doing animal noises <laughs> ever. Um no, leave it to me to be the actual clown. Period. So someone's got to do it. Someone's got to do it. <sighs> okay, let me you find a new vape up. in my purse cuz the other one's spitting oil back in in my throat. You ever just like regret? Okay, that was a good subway though. That was so, that was a good subway, <laughs> y'all. Okay, but do I you ever just like order a subway long? at like three a.m. and you're like, that was a good subway? No, but I used to eat footlongs hungover. I mean, isn't that a universal language? I did not cure the shame. I was in such a bad mood when we faced that. No, but look at us, we're together. It. I know. I just had to like get my makeup on, and listen to some Meg. You did. Did you drink a little Celsius? I drank the whole thing and I chugged it. Didn't follow your orders. <laughs> you don't have anxiety. No, I do. Oh, raging. riddled with it. <laughs> riddled, okay. riddled with it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> As Trevi just beautifully segued us, and honestly, I'm a little jealous. Hello. Trevi subwayed us, and we're going to go into a beautiful topic, which is regret, regrets, times we've had regrets. Because at the end of the day, regret is pointless, but we're human, so sometimes we feel it, and we want to talk about it. Yeah. I don't, can you take it away? <laughs> is this a safe space <laughs> is it i allow you okay this is your episode girl i swear to god i'm like well i'm like doom, 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 doom. Oh no i um god. i i mean personally i don't think i feel like that was more millennial to watch rugrats but so i don't know people tell me i'm angelica is this what Lord. we're talking about yeah wait what was the other guy in rugrats <laughs> Why am I a guy? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I Kate putting me. Trevi down for <laughs> 10 <laughs> minutes straight. I meant for me. I was thinking Ooh, about... What the f- is that? That wasn't you? No. I keep having... Mm-mm-mm. Okay, I-, I forget who's in Rugrats. Yeah, f- Rugrats. Yeah. Rugrats. Wait, oh. The Rugrats community is going to come for you. Oh, the rug- the Rugrats subreddit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, s- the Rugrats sub rugget. <laughs> <laughs> rock rat I like. Song. We should start filming at like midnight and see how kooky we get. <laughs> Honestly, I'm... I don't know if there's like many things that I regret in life. Obviously, I reg- there's things that you regret in the moment, and then you look back, right? And you're like, I am so happy that I humbled myself enough to know never to do that again. Right? You know, Exhibit A, um, continuing to do <laughs> drugs as right. my kidneys were failing, Our and I'll say it in every episode. Yeah. I don't give. A- like, I regret that. Yeah. Like, looking back now, now I know, hey, drugs aren't for me. Yeah, not your thing. Um, But as far as, like, outside of that world, I would say my biggest regret is not speaking up for myself sooner and transitioning earlier. Hmm. Yeah, I think I've said that briefly in an episode. Um, <clears throat> just, I wish... I mean, I didn't have a lot of, like, you don't really have a lot of freedom before you're 18. Yeah. But I wish I had the communication skills and less fear to bring that conversation to the family table before Mm. I, because I essentially came out to my parents that I liked boys when I was 12. Okay. 12 or 13. And um, I don't think my parents never... I don't think my parents never not accepted me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
But I do think that there was a period of time, especially where we lived, and then like also there's generational. Sh- our par- this is our parents' first time living as well. Right. Is what I always have to remind myself every time a parent makes a mistake. Mm. I, I always like think that. this is their first time being a parent. Right. Ever. I know. We forget they're human. We forget that they're... I know. I'm like, hello? Fix yeah. it all now. Yeah. I'm like, you but should But like, this answers. is their first... Not only is their first time in living the human experience, mm-hmm. to our knowledge, okay, reincarnation. Come on. Um, but it's also their first time being a parent. So it's like, you can't check off all the boxes. But there's a lot of circumstances where I felt like, I wish I, I could have just skipped, you know, just being like you know, putting the gay label on me. I never mm. resonated. That wasn't really, like, my path. And I quickly knew that. I really wish before... I mean, it's like... Yeah, this is controversial because I always talk about <laughs> the kids transitioning. Right. Things. But I really do wish, like, before puberty, like, really did its big one on me, that I, like, transitioned earlier. And that's, mm-hmm. like, my biggest regret. And is it a lesson that I can use for the future? No, because that was, like, a one-time thing. Yeah. So I think that's like a real regret that I have. Mm -hmm. But I think I would regret it even more if I wasn't so goddamn beautiful. And that's the tea. And I mean, listen, you're helping so many people just by existing and even just saying that. Like, everything you've been through, you know, uniquely qualifies you to help someone else. Yeah. And you know what? Maybe I wouldn't be six feet. And then we wouldn't have bonded over us being six feet. I know. And then... What would we wouldn't maybe maybe I wouldn't have even gotten addicted to drugs because I would have been like, oh, I'm five nine. Nothing in my life is a problem. Maybe the whole reason I did drugs was because I was a six feet. (laughs) Maybe it's why we're both. What if that's the root that we're six feet? I don't meet any six foot women alcoholics, though. It's only you. (laughs) Trevi just proved me wrong. There's so many, (laughs) but there's actually not that many. You want me to keep going? Yeah. No. <laughs> I'll keep going. Oh, God. Um, I guess that's true. No, I'm joking. But I uh, I think everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. And mm-hmm. I can't hold on to that feeling of being like, oh, I like I don't live in regret for that anymore. I think yeah. I when I was first starting and I was like, how am I going to reverse everything? I'm like, right. like now it's it works. Yeah. And anything can be, you know, not to be like, oh, I'm like extremely pro-surgery for your insecurities but like do what you want to do but like there's some things that i'm still you know ticking boxes off from my transition as far as reversing you know my first puberty because i went through two puberties Mm -hmm. it's a whole difficult situation but i feel like that would be my thing what is your thing damn and it's like i should have thought of something while you were talking right um well then but then that would mean you weren't listening and then that would be you putting me down clock that i'm not putting her down um (laughs) okay Here's a regret. At the end, of, like you just said, everything has led me to my life today, to you, to everyone. But if I could do it over, this is what I do. So my regret is just not putting myself out there sooner. My regret is not leaving the modeling industry sooner. I think I would definitely go back into it now. Mm. I actually just submitted for playboys casting they're like trying to find a new playmate and i said me i think i was just so scared of putting myself out there for so long that i mean like modeling is great but i'm trying to find my wording for me like i wanted to make it in modeling so i could do something like this like that's what i want i wanted to like make it big in modeling and then i was like well once i have like a bigger platform then i'll be able to like speak and actually be myself yeah. but i could have done that the whole time whilst you, modeling you, but also like the stories you tell me i feel like your, yeah. your agents were like yeah yeah you can't show personality yeah they were like don't have a personality at all i regret like yeah just not sticking up for myself within the modeling industry as well just like putting up with because i was like mm-hmm. oh i have to yeah. because like this is what's going on yeah this is what um, pays my bills yeah type shit. You know? Literally, and it like barely paid my bills because literally couldn't get booked to save my life. Walk it off. I regret not. I regret not sticking up for myself in one relationship where mm-hmm. this particular man gave me eight UTIs in six months, and it was literally because our skin was rejecting each other. Like I went to three urologists. They were like, "Your skin is reject- rejecting each other." He did like all the tests. I just stayed in it even though i wasn't happy and i was getting these like horrible utis because i was like well he's nice to me and i think that's enough 
So I wish I had built more self-esteem to leave that relationship. It had like nothing to do with him. Like he's great. It just like wasn't a match. Like um, your body's literally told you. Yeah, <laughs> my body was telling me, but it's changed my pussy forever. Like I Oh, the boric acid of it all. You need a like a No, rebate. not the, not even the boric acid like the I pee every 30 minutes ever since the UTI gate and like UTI. and it like also like changed my relationship with sex like I for a while every time I'd have intercourse after dating him I'd be like oh my god this is gonna be the one that gives me a UTI <sighs> and it's like You'd like have this fear yeah. yeah and it's like you know what if you if your skin is rejecting someone else's skin look into it but mm. then my urologist was like a lot of people are happily married and just deal with the UTIs and I said that's crazy yeah, what are you gonna have in antibiotics on tap? Exactly. I was like, damn, yeah, that sucks. Have fun with that immune yeah. system. I don't My know. good God. I think that these days, a lot of the industry works in reverse nowadays. Any mm -hmm. industry, music, fashion, modeling, a lot of them don't care unless you do your big one on social media. So right now, you're doing your big one. You have your podcast with mm -hmm. me. Yeah. You have your podcast with Harper, mm -hmm. um, and you start. You're starting to do live shows and putting yourself out there in every way. Yeah, and you're growing on your Instagram with with your reels and stuff, and like, you are growing, and it's gonna like, that's gonna bring the opportunity, and it works in reverse nowadays. No. Like, why do you think that labels are signing people right. whose songs are going viral on TikTok? Right. Because back then you had to like fight your way into a building yeah. Yeah. of Sony, Warner, or Universal just for them to listen right. and then believe in you and then they made you the star. Right. Now, they find already pre-existing stars and you know what it right. is? The arts and entertainment industry has become lazy. They have become... Everyone says that. They have become... They go... Nothing... Like, artist development and music, it's like non-existent at yeah. this point. They want, they want a pre-packaged... They're like, oh, all right, you have two million on TikTok, and you right. seem like you kind of know like who you are. Yeah, I guess you're developed as an artist. We're gonna talk about signing you, right? And then they give you, you know, a record deal. Yeah. Same goes for probably modeling. It's like, right. yeah, I was like hiding myself because I was like ashamed of my weird, right. per weird personality. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I just started getting comfortable putting myself out there, and it happens when it happens. So, well, you're the reason I make TikToks, and that means a lot. And you're the reason I started YouTube. So, do you want to fight? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> guys, as you can see, we're kind of rocking the cleavage today. And that is because we have a lot to talk about with you. And one of those things is we. OK, <laughs> wow, I'm really bombing. This is crazy. <laughs> um, we need to tell you things because a lot of shit happened this week and we need to get it off our chest. So this is our next segment called uh, off my chest. Oh, our is it our sure. or my? We, d we don't know. I don't off we don't my know. chest, off our chest. But I wanted to say it together. OK. Off our chest. Off my our chest. Off my our chest. Ready? One, two, three. Are we doing, uh, yeah. are we doing off our or yeah, off our? Okay. One, well, because it's us at the same time. <laughs> right. One, <laughs> two, three. Off, off our, our chest. chest. Our. I don't know why I just said it like that. I did it I too. Like, our. Our matey. <laughs> Ahoy. Anyways. Chips. Um, yeah. So we uh, this segment is where we just like get things off our chest, whether they be positive, whether they be negative, and everything in between. Trevi, I'm going to need you to take it away. Okay. I uh, stumbled into Charlie XCX's birthday party. No big deal. Um, I have... Okay, so it was at Tenants. Which is crazy. Um, Croizoy. So I went. I had a way of getting on the list. And it wasn't like a friends and family thing, so that would have been weird if I showed up and it was like, like obviously it was friends and family, but it right. wasn't like intimate twenty person like dinner right. beat. Like people had like plus ones and plus twos and shit like that. I did my big one, yeah, and I got myself on the list. Anyway, so I f I get my way into the party, and I mean, I knew a lot of people there. It was so it was like I felt in my element, and it was just very very. I was like in that room, and I was like I belong here as yeah a, as a future biggest pop star of the world yeah me, 100%. i was like oh this is the, this is a room i'm supposed to be in uh, absolutely um yeah <laughs> anya oh yeah anya me photobombing the anya okay so like insert what? photo here of me photobombing a picture of charlie xcx and anya taylor joy okay it's giving mm -hmm. me and queen's gambit new season literally like you're so, literally in it i think the coolest thing for me was like 
just seeing a bunch of people in the music industry mm-hmm. just let loose. And like, it was just so on brand, like for her to do it at that location. Yeah. And I really just genuinely had one of the best nights I've had in a long time. Oh my gosh. Um, I really enjoyed myself. And one of the photos that were taken of me ended up in Vogue. I know that's right. I live. I laugh. I love. Wow. But yeah, that's my off my chest. That was like a really fun experience for me. I felt like, not that I deserved it. I just like, you do. I felt like I needed it. I needed mm-hmm. a, like a story and like a night like that. Yeah. For like Lord and Charlie to like sing Girls So Confusing on the stage, like wow. while they're just like drunk as shit, just like vibing. What I was just like, wow. Cheers to us being in rooms that we feel like we belong in. I know that's right. I know <laughs> you're, 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 take I know, that vape. I know you're addicted to the vape, and I'm sorry if I triggered you. No, it was weird to hold one. Was it? It felt good. It matched your outfit, It though. felt powerful. Like, I can hold it, and I don't have to suck it. And I've always said that yeah. about many, many things. Yeah, exactly. Um, My off my chest this week is... So, speaking of grinding, as Trevi mentioned before, I have a channel with my roommate, Harper Rose Drummond. It's called Parallel Play. And we're doing a live show in Woo-hoo. New York and L.A. Woo! Hey! Um, tickets are in the Parallel Play IG bio. Check it out. Um, and, yeah, we're really excited. Uh, L.A.'s in, like, a month. And then New York's in October. Okay. So, basically, I was talking to Harper Rose. And she's been a stand-up for, like, eight years. And the only time I've been on a mic is this podcast and, like, AA meetings. <laughs> so, I, like... like. So honestly, this podcast has helped a lot and the meetings. But the AA training of it all. No, literally, because I, I mean, I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to anyways. I spoke at a meeting recently for 30 minutes on a microphone in front of like 100 people. And I was like, you know what? I can do a live show if I did this. Was it one of those meetings that's like in like a big church? Yeah. And it was like all gay men. It was kind of everything. I maybe shouldn't. Put Wait, that that's in. everything. <laughs> I shouldn't add that. I don't know what to do, guys. Uh, I never know if I should talk about it or not. But why not? You talk about whatever you want. Okay. Yeah. True. But anyways, um, so Harper Rose was like, we should start doing open mics together. And for those that don't know, an open mic is you like pay five dollars for five minutes. And it's for like aspiring stand-up comedians. You go on the microphone, you do your set for five minutes in front of a bunch of other aspi- aspiring I'm comedians. Do it so bad. You need to I do it. Try it just once. No, here's Bucket the thing. List. I what I've noticed in this past year and all the inspiring women around me. Um, there's so many moments in this past year where I've been like, I'm never gonna do that in my life. Like posting like a solo YouTube video or just like even posting a, a solo Instagram reel. I don't know. I've been like, no, I am. Um, I can't do that. And once you just something just switches i do it and then i'm like what the fuck was i afraid of mm. like i'm shit posting on my instagram now who gives it because we are in a content vortex we're getting thrown content all the time doesn't matter yeah. post shit anyways um you never know what's gonna hit too you, ne- you never know could be the weirdest most like last thought last minute thought literally video that like changes your life that's always the one so I was like, you know what, Harper Rose? I'll do this open mic with you. So we show up. Mm-hmm. It's like all women. It's so cute. Oh, and me and Harper Rose get on stage. And she's like, all right, this is Kate's first open mic. And I was like, oh, God, this is scary. And um, I immediately felt so good. It was obviously scary. And there were some points where I bombed. I tried to make a joke. And everyone was like, oh, why would you just say they that? They go, oh, that's not. They were like, oh, that's not. But that's all part of the process. Mm-hmm. I opened up talking about how my ex is 54 and 54, and it felt powerful. Good. And I signed up for one tomorrow, and I'm Fun. gonna be doing it like alone on stage, not with Harper Rose. Because if I realize, like, if I'm gonna work in entertainment, I need to get comfortable with like bombing and feeling rejected. I just need to put myself the fuck out there. Yeah. And you've really taught me that. Like, just put yourself out there. Who gives a it. I'm actually really proud of you. I think that's big. Thank you. I mean, honestly, even if I thought to do like a stand up open mic, like the, even that gives me like shiver me timbers. Right. It's scary. It's a, it's a scary thing, but the more you'll do it, the more right. comfortable you'll get. You just fully were like, right before you got on, you were just like, you know what? I'm here for a reason. You yeah. just like, did it. Slay. Yeah, and I was like, I'm going to fake it. Even if I am scared, they're not going to see my weakness. They won't. And I had Harper Rose on stage with me, so we were just riffing. <laughs> I think you were about to say, and I had heartburn. Yeah, <laughs> and I did have heartburn. Heartburn Rose. Yeah, heartburn Rose. <laughs> Do you ever 
get jealous. Have a little, oh. do you ever get jealous? Yeah. And do you ever get a wee little shiver of nervousness? Yeah. And it's for the smallest, weirdest things. Really? Like, it could be a live music performance of like mm-hmm. 2,000 people. And I feel like I'd be like, let's go. Yeah. But then it's like, like a date or oh. like a, like a meeting with like a company and it's like just me and like two other executives Ooh. like i'll be in the car like palms sweaty yeah. knees weak mom spaghetti and it's like such little things and what i've noticed about myself and i think a lot of people uh, can agree to this that work in this industry it's like the smaller more intimate settings mm. sometimes are a little bit more overwhelming than yeah. Because then, like, with the big crowds, it's like, you can imagine everyone naked or, yeah, like... why is that tea? Because then it's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's more... It's just so intimate. Like, certain yeah. things, like, I... I remember I got really nervous in the car on the way to Shannon's podcast. Oh, why? I just... Because I haven't seen her in so long, mm-hmm. and I just, like, knew I was about to be, like, talking to her for an hour and a half. I was like, mm-hmm. what's her vibe going to be? Like, is she going to like me? Like... Right. People I haven't seen in a long time, like, reconnecting with them. Like, if I'm meeting up with an old friend who I haven't seen in years. Oh, that's scary. That one, like, I recently did that with um, Lauren Geraldo, my really good friend and old roommate. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen her in years because she moved out of um, the state. And I was just, like, I was nervous because I just, like, we've both changed so much. She became a mother. I became a, you know, woman. And, Mm. (laughs) (laughs) And it was just, like, right where we picked uh, or right we picked up right where we left off and um you know obviously that was relief but it was still like seeing someone you haven't seen in a long time or like oh or like have you ever like gone to dinner or met up with someone where you're like resolving a an issue oh so awkward like a, the like worst a, is showing up and walking towards each other and you're like God, like damn like post breakup or like yeah. post um yeah. fight fight even Maybe with a friend so. yeah the even friend is with, almost more awkward honestly it's because it's like how you been? Right. You can't even like make out. Like what? Yeah, yeah. You can't be like, so who you? Right, 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 right. God, God, scary. And like the executives are scary because they're older, so you can't like crack the usual jokes. You're like good with older people though. You're good I, with the. Execs. I am good with older people. I've gotten yeah. better. I mean, I've just always, as a kid, got along with older people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think now my humor is very like childish. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm also just very like, here's me. Right. Take it or leave it. And a lot of older people, especially like older executives, like if I'm coming into a meeting and be like, just saying some like Gen Z. Right. And I'm like not talking about like, you know, my asshole or like sucking dick. But it's like like, I was sucking this guy off the other night. I'm like sucking and cock. (laughs) And what what does she say? <laughs> she goes, and you did it at my birthday dinner. <laughs> I know. But yeah, nervousness. It's all around us. It's all around us. Just yeah. like danger. I mean, I I felt really nervous when I met up with that big agent because I was like, oh yeah. Because I was like, he's seen my videos, so I tried to crack some Kate jokes. Yeah. They didn't. I, I bombed. They didn't land. Okay. Um. You know, I was just like, he was talking about my videos. Some people. And- <laughs> no talk talk talk, talk some talk. people are so business oriented yes where they're like they are different people in business hours yeah yeah no totally like recently yeah. i've met people that are just like you crack a joke and i'm like oh that's yeah. a boundary right i was like and and you set that boundary and i respect it because yeah. we so i got like drinks with that agent and we got like mocktails and um the regular list looks so good like the not the alcoholic beverages well, thank god wow can i like speak now <laughs> well you're thinking about alcohol. the regular alcohol um <laughs> and <laughs> not the fake one yeah i was like what and we were looking at the menu and i just cracked a joke about relapse it like didn't land i was like god these look so good i should just relapse right now and he was like wait what and i was like oh i'm hey, kidding i can't tell I'm you kidding. you know you know that happened when i started becoming friends with with Tana again after like our two year separation. You joke about oh yeah, I'll, she'd be so first, scared. The first and like that whole friend group, they were so concerned of me because I was yeah. I knew I was stable in my sobriety very early on. Like I knew I was gonna Trevi be. Trevi knew who she was, was from, from a very young age. young age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I knew I just had a gut feeling like even yeah. when I was like three months, I was like, oh, this is gonna like last a lifetime. But yeah, when I started cracking relapse <laughs> jokes, when I started becoming friends with uh, Tana and like Bella and Ashley and everyone again, and Amari, and I'm like. 
basically the same shit. Like, oh, this yeah. all looks so good. I kind of want to relapse right yeah, now. And like, they'd, like, laugh. And then I'd, like, find out that, like, later they'd all, like, ha- like talk about it and be like, um, this makes us dead. really uncomfortable. Oh, that's kind of the- sweet, though. Yeah, it is sweet because it's, like, they're worried about me. But right. it's, like, no, but I'm, like, walking in the house now. And it's just, like, they understand that joke. I'm jo- And I'm, like, joking, you know. Yeah. Or yeah, am I? I love it. I love joking about relapse. I mostly do it with my sober friends, though. I mostly just do it. I mostly just <laughs> relapse, yeah. I mostly just tend to lapse, really. Yeah, a lot. Is that a problem? Had a relapse dream the other night. Those were the worst. Those, like, first few months of sobriety. Yeah. People don't talk about that enough. It's weird when they hit when you're almost at five years. Yeah. That, I still that get... was a subtle brag, by the way. Um, was it? Yeah. When like is your... Flexing. When is your... October 5th. Should have been September 7th, but I kept smoking weed. Oh. Can't win them all. I'm three years in... When? So soon. Four days. Four days! Wait, yeah. what are we doing for it? I'll probably just do a dinner. Damn, how do you feel? Like, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> <Stop. laughs> I'm just kidding. Because I, I always feel, feel kind of weird around my anniversary. I feel good. I mean, considering you met me when I was 40 days. Girl, that's crazy. We've known each other for lifetimes. You're coming up on three years. Three years. That's nuts. I know, because I met you when you were like two. And I met you when you had, like, three minutes. You don't feel, like, any anniversary jitters at all? You're just, I just cruising. Because it's just my life. Yeah. I've accepted that it's my life. Yeah. And it feels good. It feels good that it's my life. I don't... Th- I, it's not a constant battle the way it was. And I think it's just because the radical acceptance, you have to radically accept yeah. that, like, that's not for you. And I just have learned to enjoy my life again. And if you ask me how, I don't, I can't tell you because I just don't know. Mm-hmm. I was the most stubborn person. I thought I would not be able to live a happy life without alcohol or drug or yeah. anything. I don't know how. I don't. Yeah. So here's the lead me to my next segment about how severely depressed I am. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Stop. I'm kidding. No, but here's the thing about being sober. It's like <laughs> you do feel everything so insanely more real mm. everything's more real the depression's so more real the anxiety is more real it's thick but when euphoria and happiness comes in its moments mm. and it ebbs and flows like everything in life you're not going to constantly be happy that's why we were doing that because right. we wanted to constantly be happy correct and that's just not the way that life works no nope. um, i will say when the happy parts come and when happy memories are made it's so much more worth it because yes. it feels so much more real it's so much better. But yeah. And you know what? All of this essentially is just taking care of yourself and self-care. And some things that come along with self-care mm-hmm. could be a blowout, could mm-hmm. be a spray tan, could mm-hmm. be a manicure, a facial or a massage. Mm. And mm, I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cooking. I see the vision. Um, you briefly once told me mm. that you had a story to share about a time you were doing self-care, you were getting a massage, mm. you were loosening up your tendons and muscles, mm. and you had an experience. Right. And I recently had an experience as well mm. when I got a facial, mm. like I referenced in the beginning of the episode. So I want to hear your story mm. when you're just talking. Incredible <laughs> subway. Incredible. Incredible subway. Um, way better than my off my chest one. I just know you have this story and you want to tell it and I want to tell mine too. So go. Okay. So there I am with my ex-boyfriend, right? We're eating Indian food. We're at this amazing Indian restaurant. We're eating and then he's talking about how much he loves George Clooney because he's worked with George Clooney. And I'm like, that's incredible. And we're like talking about it. And then there's kind of a lull in the conversation. So I was like, how do I spice this up? And so I was like, would you suck him off? Just like a a question. Like, you know, like we're just having fun. We all would. And he goes, excuse me. And I was like, well, what? And he was like, what the did you just say? And I was like, would you suck him off? He's like, I'm not gay. And he like freaks out. And I'm just like trying to enjoy this Indian food. And he was like, why would you ask me that? I'm not gay. Which is like. Listen, my future man, if I ask him if he would suck off someone, you he's going to yes. he's going to answer it, okay? Yeah. And so anyways, he freaks out and he leaves the restaurant. No. Is, uh, we're getting to the massage part. He freaks out. So he darts out of the restaurant, doesn't even h- hold the door open for me. I'm like running past him. I'm like, "Dude, I'm sorry. I like it was a joke. I thought I thought we could like have a laugh." And he was like, "You think I'm a joke?" Blah 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 blah. He's like freaking out. And I was like, "Damn, overreaction of the year." Yeah. And then <laughs> Above. Yeah, he rips a c- above. He rips a cigarette, and he's like, "Let's get a massage." And I was like, what? "Okay." And I'm like terrified at this point. Um, didn't even get to finish my Indian food. Was pissed off. 
And so I was the mixture of me being angry at him for being making such a scene and like scarfing down that Indian food. Cause as he was like freaking out and he was like getting his stuff ready to leave, I'm like shoveling the Indian food. Cause I was like, this is so good and expensive. I can't waste it. Mm. So my stomach starts to get a little wild, you know? So anyways, we pull up to the massage parlor. Yeah. Your girl had moderate gas, which is like fine, but we were in such a big fight over the George Clooney sucking off situation (laughs) that like, and also he would, yeah, uh, oh, like, come on now. But I remember at one point I was like, can we please just not fight about this? And I'm like trying not to literally shit myself. But anyways, we go. We were getting <laughs> <like> a <bridesmaids. laughs> it is. So we go into the massage room and he's just like taking off his clothes. And he's like, let's just get this massage. I was like, damn, we had to suck the fun out of everything. Like, God. And so I'm laying down getting this massage i'm tense as hell because this man just screamed at me right and i'm like kind of like gassy and they push down on me in the massage oh (laughs) yeah and i just i don't know and like he was already placed about to (laughs) (laughs) and i was already like i wish we weren't in a fight because it could have been funny yeah but he was so mad that it just made it so much more awkward and i was like wow and i remember in that moment i was like i saw my clothes from the corner of my eye what if i just took out a crisp 50 chucked it on the table and just ran out blocked his number and never talked to him again mm-hmm. that, that really went through my head i was like i i should just leave this yeah. is so awkward yeah but I didn't. And then I stayed with him for two more months. Hey! Hey! That's my massage story. Don't tell anyone that. I'm human. Like, sorry that things got really awkward really fast. Yeah. Well, it just sucks that he sucked the fun out of everything the way that he would suck George Clooney off. But speak on it. Speak on it. I need a goofy guy if I'm ever yeah, going to date. It, I need someone. I need a guy. You know every guy has a guy crush. Everyone. <laughs> Literally. Like, even I have a girl crush. Like right. I, girls are more open about yeah. it, but it's like you know, p- guys know when other guys are attractive. Right. I'm not saying like you'd actually suck, suck him, him off. Well, <laughs> if he had that response, I'm sure he would deep throat. Yeah, I just like, and you know what? Like maybe another reason I didn't get so attached to the guy I hooked up with the other night was because he he's like a sweetheart, but he wasn't goofy, and we were talking about like masturbation, and I was like, yeah, I was jacked off the other night and he was like can you and he was like (laughs) he was like can you not say jack off and i was like this is why we'll never be together live your truth so i got my face massaged the other day and a facial if you will right and i haven't gotten like a true facial a local true facial in a very long time (laughs) where like they just go in and like you know go into the pores steam me pamper me give me the masks pop the blackheads do the extractions I would like I needed that. I wear a lot of makeup. I work a lot. I'm yeah. always on camera. I'm always wearing makeup. Mm-hmm. It's the tea and the the lore, mm-hmm. quite literally. The tour. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's so funny. Like I knew it was like a very like spa y kind of thing. Like no talking. Like lights were low. Like there was sound bowl music playing. Like Ooh. it was supposed to be really relaxing. But me and the girl who was doing my facial, we ended up just like. Hitting it off like of just as, as friends, so yeah. I, we're, I'm just we're chatting the yeah. entire time, mm-hmm. and then we start getting to the subject of just like woo woo sh- mm. crystals and spirits and you know university things and I don't know I feel like if you work as like an esthetician or you like work in like that sort of area you're kind of like an empath in a way because it's like your job is like right. making people feel more beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, same for people in arts. I feel like very. And, you know, you could also be a very selfish person if you work, work in the arts. But, like, I don't know. What I was gathering from it, I was, like, your whole job is, like, taking care of people and their skin and making them feel more beautiful and, mm-hmm. you know, just helping people. And she loves to do that. Right. And so, I don't know. We just started talking about spiritual stuff. And in the last five minutes mm-hmm. of her doing that, and we were, like, in the midst of some woo-woo talk, okay, uh-huh. there was... The light, oh my God. the dim light that was on, it starts flickering. And this is a brand new facial place. It opened up like a month ago. All the light bulbs screwed in correctly. This place is clean as a whistle. The farmhouse doors, the interior design, everything is up to date. The light starts flickering. And then she goes, 
she like gets her hands off my face and she starts what because she and then it starts flickering and then it turns off completely and then this is when i knew it wasn't an electrical problem it starts going like this boop 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 like fully on off on off as, as if someone was on a switch and, what? and I, we were looking at the switch like the switch was inside we weren't touching it the light was going boop 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 and then it flickered a little bit again off and then just back on she starts having a panic attack no and she's and we both just look at each other we're like and we're she kind of told me that that kind of stuff happens to her when she like talks about it and i told her to me too and i've had my experiences and i was like girl it's okay brie she starts like freaking out are you serious yeah it was like really weird and i i can like not to be like, oh, I'm like psychic, but like I can feel when there's like a presence in the room. And I didn't think it was a bad one, but I just like, I felt like there was chills all over me. And I don't know. It was just, we're, we were like breaking down our numerology. We had like the same like numerology uh, number. Like we just had a lot of things in common and just, it just felt very right. And it just, I don't know, something in that moment was like trying to tell something. I'm not sure exactly what. So then that happens. I have that in my head all day, right? Oh, my God. I go and get dinner with a friend in Orange County on my way back from San Diego. Okay. Because Orange County's on the way back to L.A. from San Diego. So I get out of the uh, the car, put my suitcase in my friend's car, and we get dinner. And we're just talking. We get We catch up, whatever. And we start also randomly having, like, woo woo ish kind of spiritual talk okay and he's telling me about how he had this phase where like he would like pass street lights in his car and like they would turn off when he passed them and like when he passed them they would turn back on okay street lights are older like right. it wasn't like this because i and i'm not invalidating this person's experience so let me re- reverse my words but like basically i was just like okay that's like kind of a crazy thing to say i'm sure he's telling the truth but like how many times does that really happen to you, right? Just logically speaking. So I'm like, that's crazy. I told him what happened at the fa- – because the, the facial thing was the same day. This was oh my God. this was yesterday. Yeah. This was literally yesterday. Right. Okay. Finish our meal, you know, hug, good to see you. I call another car to take me to the rest of my journey back to L.A. Tell me why within five minutes of me getting in this Uber, we have to, like, get out of Orange County through this neighborhood – Okay. And I'm not on my phone. I have my headphones in. I'm just listening to music, looking at the window. I pass the street light. It turns off as I'm passing it and turns back on as the what? car passes. The fact that I just had that implemented in my, like, that was a thought that I had. And then I passed by a stoplight and, or a, a street light. Like the, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and the fact that within five minutes of me getting in the car after that whole conversation. Right. And then previously that day I was talking about woo-woo stuff. The lights all start flickering. It Yesterday was a weird day. Like spiritually, like university, like I don't know. And I've just been saying to you and I feel it for you too. And I'm maybe I am psychic. Yeah. I say it to my mom. But like I feel like we're so close to something yeah. good, me and you. Yeah. With whether it's this podcast or your comedy taking off, my music taking off, both of it, A D all the above. Yeah. I'm just so close to something that I can taste it. And I'm I don't know if these are like little signs from the universe right. or something. But like to see physical weird stuff like that happen. And I know that had nothing to do with farting on a massage table, but <sighs> nah, that, it was self spiritual in itself. Yeah. So, oh my God. Yeah. That's I'm bewildered. I'm bemarked. Oh my God. Yeah. So that stuff, like, kind of stuff happens to you. Yeah. But it hasn't happened until recently. Tap in, baby. Someone's trying to tell you something. Because why am I, I'm like, why am I thawing out now? Yeah. Why am I feeling all this emotion again? Right. Why am I, like, kind of, like, I'm working more than ever. I feel more driven more than ever. Same. And I feel more spiritually connected more than ever. And now I just feel like things are moving. Juices are flowing. Tears are coming. Like Wow. I don't know. Maybe it was that buck moon. The Buck Moon. So that was my, that was my self care massage facial. I tried to blend it. I don't know. I tried. That was that like really had me bemerved. Really. In every way. So is it giving questions? God, I guess so. Guys, we're gonna move into the segment where we answer your advice and question and queries sent into our Instagram at Six Feet Above Pod. Be sure to go over and follow us, so you know and can be a part of this. All right, Kate, take it away. Okay, the first one is. Where and how to meet other sober people, the Valley, L.A. area. Scared of being weird. Well, 
Listen. Listen. It's, you're probably weird. So are we. Let's knock that out first. Don't be scared. Let's get that out of the way. Like, we're all weird. Mm-hmm. I didn't know for a very long time. I mean, as far like, meetings aside, right? Yeah, no. Meetings aside, I really realized, as in the past, like, six months, Silver Lake. Mm. There's so many sober people in Silver Lake, or so many sober people that go out in Silver Lake. I've met, right. I've never met so many more sober people than by me going out in Silver Lake in the past few months. Wow. I'm like, where have y'all been? Right. Because I'm like, I thought I was the only freak that was going out sober. Right. There is a plenty of us. <sighs> and so, there is. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's my tea. Yeah. I mean, just uh, ten into the trees, yeah. eighteen hundred. There are sober bars too. There's sober bars too. There's like, and there's also just like really cool like cafes and things i don't know everything in silver lake to see silver lake flea market like mm-hmm. there's a lot of everyone's very social over there yeah a lot more social than over on like the west side of la totally i agree like the west hollywood and on right i and, don't know yeah like any any clubs that don't have to do with drinking like a running club mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. A- any oh, any of that. that i know like anything that's like active i'm sure most people like don't drink or they have a healthy relationship with alcohol and like don't need it or like a yoga class. I know a lot of mm. people that do yoga, like the chat after. Yeah. Or like any gym class. Right. Therefore, like a class of like, you know, a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. If it was a really good class, you're like, hell. Yeah. You slay. You chat it up. You never know when you meet a friend. Also, like, just speak up. Yeah. If they're like, if there's someone that you just feel like you have a vibe with, mm-hmm. just be like, I, I just, uh, for some reason, feel like we'd be friends. Is that a crime? You're so good at that. Am I? You're so good at talking to strangers. Oh my god. That's spooky. I feel like I'm like such a You literally doing... just walk into a room and you like make so many new friends and I'm just like, damn. Um Don't put me down. What? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> the next one is I'm twenty one years old and I have a weird relationship with self pleasure. Please help. I didn't have my first bus till I was twenty one. Okay. And the way I did it. I was so freaked out, too. I thought I was broken. I was, like, sticking my fingers up there. I felt nothing. And so what I did, I went to an SEX shop. Mm. And I went with my friend, and we got little bullet vibrators. And it was so awkward and weird because me and my friend were really shy still. And we were just like, oh, yeah, I'm not even going to use this. Peruse. Explore. And then I busted. Hey. Sometimes you need a little external help. Totally. And, like, don't, don't feel ashamed. There's already so much shame. That we deal with. Yeah. Everyone's entitled to a bust if they want it. C- consensually, of course. Yeah, yeah. I also just, you never know what the what the reason behind this person's question was. Because, like, mm-hmm. a lot of people are scared to do it because of religion. Right. A lot of people are scared to do it because maybe, like, past trauma. Like, right. Just SA trauma in general could mm-hmm. make dual feelings uncomfortable. And totally. I understand that. Do the best you can to kind of maybe figure out, like, why you think that makes you uncomfortable mm-hmm. and then go from the ground up rather than like the top down like you don't need to force yourself to self-pleasure right. and you make yourself mad and be like why right. why is this not working like maybe start with your feelings why are you feeling this way okay then, period no like and then like maybe move up slowly yeah and don't don't like push yourself don't put pressure so, yeah. on it like you also don't have to fine. no one's forcing you to if yeah you, you if don't you, have to buck yeah I mean, I was just answering it thinking you really wanted to. But yeah, and maybe you do. But listen, don't don't push it. Just take it easy. But you know what? This person does live in the context of all in which they live and what came before them. That's so true. Yeah. Best wishes and best nuts to you. Oh, uh, and I'm grateful for that. Are you feeling grateful? I'm feeling so grateful. <gasps> Aww. Aww. I'm, I'm grateful for our friendship. I'm so grateful for our friendship. I'm grateful for that you continue to amaze me with these outfits. <laughs> I just don't know. Like, where do you keep getting, like, where do they keep, I came in here don't worry with the it. same necklace as last week and a button up tied. And it looks amazing. Thanks. But I just, I wish I had the, like, you're giving star power. I'm giving, like. You're giving everything, so. Everything bagel. Hey. I had one of those recently. So I'm grateful good. for that. Like yeah. a Dave's Killer Bread, mm-hmm. thinly sliced, everything bagel, toasted. With spreadable cream cheese and sriracha. Ooh, oh, I'm so grateful God. for food right now. I'm having so a good. moment. I'm just letting loose with food right now. I'm having fun. I know that's right. It's everything. I'm so grateful. Lotto came out with a new song called Prized Possession. Okay. And I love when the rap girlies get emotional. Mm. And in the beginning of the song, it's like the beat. And then she goes, <sighs> okay. And she just sounds so defeated. Mm. And that little, like, her being like, <sighs> 
okay, reminds me of on Traumazine Meg's album. She has a song called Anxiety. <laughs> and in the beginning, it's like, dun, dun, dun. And she goes, <sighs> and she's like, I just need to get a lot to get off my chest. And I'm like, I love a, when the rap girlies get emotional, and B, when they do that little like, talking in the beginning, because I was like, mm-hmm. you're so human, you're, uh, and you're so real. It's your first time ever living. Oh, God. Literally, I appreciate yeah. it so much, so, yeah. It's everything. You know. I just want to kick this <laughs> by saying, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> you're like, I love when she got really vulnerable there. Yeah, no, <laughs> was, no, for real. I'm very grateful. I have a very, very busy, 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 busy week. So many sessions. And so much great music's being made. And I feel most myself and most emotionally uh, available and intact when I'm artistically uh, active. So I'm very happy about that. Well. We love you guys. We love you guys. So much. And we will see you next week. Yes. <laughs>